Hi, good evening everyone. Long time no see. That's what she said. It has been about four months since I last came to you with an update. Can't believe how much time flies. I put on a little bit of makeup and got myself all dressed up just for you guys. I wanted to come to you and give you an update and I thought it would be special to take the opportunity to get dressed up since I've been in the house so much lately as I know a lot of you have been as well. And there's been a few things going on with me and there's a reason that I haven't been giving updates. So now's the perfect time to just let you know what has been going on. For those of you who have been following my channel forever, you know that I was diagnosed with stage three breast cancer. And I talk a lot about it in my last episode, if any of you want to go back and watch that, or any of my previous videos. I'm not going to dive deep into my history today, I just want to bring you the updates. However, a brief overview, I was told in July that I had no evidence of disease whatsoever, and that it seemed like I was completely cancer free. Based off of my blood work um, and the assessment by my oncologist. So it was very great news. And I had finally gotten back to work um, June 1st. And my message to you was July 7th. And about a week after that message to you, my work load really ramped up. So I had originally come in on light duty, but then I got a lot of projects put on my plate with a very short turnaround period of time. So it started to get a bit stressful and I was working from you know, just long hours, about 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern time, because a lot of the educational events that I was coordinating involved staff and physicians who were on the West Coast. So I would have to stay up late to communicate with them. Anyway, um, you know, hindsight's 2020, and even my director at the time had said, you know, if he could do it over again, he would have put the brakes on some of them projects. But early September, I woke up in the morning and I had excruciating pain in my left lower groin, about right here. I'm showing you guys. And it also was in my back around here. So like in the front of my body, it was kind of lower in the pelvis. And in the back, it was like, I don't know, a little bit higher. So it was so bad, I couldn't even walk or bear weight on my leg. And I didn't do anything to injure myself. So I wound up actually having to have my grandmother drive me to the hospital. And they wound up doing CAT scans and a bunch of tests on me, and they admitted me overnight. And they had me see an orthopedic surgeon, and he determined that he thought it was a labrum tear in my hip. They ruled out the things that they thought it could be, such as a kidney stone or a problem with my ovary. And uh, my lab work seemed good, so it didn't seem to be cancer related. However, the orthopedic surgeon wanted to do an MRI where they also did an arthrogram, which means they injected into my hip joint 
because the orthopedic surgeon suspected that I had a labrum tear. I wound up having to take a leave of absence from work because the orthopedic surgeon did not want me sitting up at a right degree angle. He wanted me either back at like 60 degrees with my hip turned open. I'll show you. He wanted me like back at 60 degrees with the hip out, kind of like this, but lean back. And uh, that, or he wanted me taking short walks because he thought he was going to have to do surgery and he wanted me to stay strong. So I wasn't able to work and it really was a blow for me because I was so excited to be back at work. Um, and then I started getting a bit fearful because there was nothing specific that I did to injure myself. And as you all know, I'm a yogi and I have not been doing anything aggressive. I've just been doing super mild stretches. So it was really concerning to me that I had this injury without doing anything. So I got a little bit nervous thinking, you know, could be the cancer. It's about the, the month where you would find this out. And so I had to really stay grounded in God and faith and know like the mantra going into this. This is happening for me, not to me. No matter what it is, I can make it through. So it took a while to get the MRI approved. And in the meantime, I started following up with my cancer doctors. And you know, I just noticed that, man, even though I was back to work for a short period of time, I fell back into this pattern of sort of neglecting the things I needed to take care of myself, including my follow-up doctor appointments. Um, yeah, no shame blame or guilt on myself. I forgive myself. I did not know what I was doing. But um, yeah, so even that hip injury, it, it happened for me. I was able to see a lot of patterns that started back up at work that were um, just unhealthy. So I took that time to reflect. And you guys also know that I practice a lot of body, mind, and spirit methodology. So I believe in treating myself and everybody as a whole being, body, mind, and spirit. And what's interesting is in the um, body, mind, symbology, the left hip represents moving forward too fast. And if I were to be honest with all of you and myself, I really do think I went back to work um, a little bit too fast, especially being that I wasn't able to do the appropriate physical therapy. And the way I learned that was I was outside of my house and I wound up falling uh, while I had the labor the hip injury. And when I went into the orthopedic surgeon, he assessed my arm and thought that I sprained it. He said I sprained my arm. And he had me start doing physical therapy. And when I went to physical therapy, the therapist, all he did was put his hand here. And I just started crying and crying and crying. And, um, this is the side that the primary cancer was on for me, the invasive cancer. I had cancer in both breasts. Uh, however, the right side was invasive and it spread to my lymph nodes. So when Doug, my physical therapist, who's phenomenal and I trust him like anyone on the planet, he's amazing as he started like just 
putting his hand here and opening my arm up, I was crying. And he told me we can take this as slow as your body needs. You've been through a lot. You know, the double mastectomy, chemo, radiation, all of that. I had the expanders under my pectoral muscle. Dr. Newman did surgery last February to move my, um, to move the silicone breast implants over the muscle. But I never did physical therapy. And because of COVID, I never got in to see Dr. Newman, my surgeon. So when Doug started doing physical therapy, I realized, oh my goodness, I need to see Dr. Newman. He hasn't even evaluated me. And I was really feeling pretty down just because here I am out of work again. Could it be cancer? I don't know. Now I'm falling. I'm ending up, I ended up with a sprained ankle. Just ridiculous. I was like, what is happening, God? How is this happening for me? Like, what is happening? Anyway, <laughs> ah, it's all happening for me because I scheduled an in-person appointment with Dr. Newman. And Dr. Newman, the second he looked at my chest, which is right here, he could see that I have adhesions where my skin is stuck to my ribs. I don't know if you can appreciate that on the video. I'm trying to give you guys multiple views. So actually, Doug has been doing physical therapy with me for I don't know how many weeks now, but he manipulates in here. See how it's moving? When he started, it wouldn't move a millimeter in any direction. But now it is moving a little bit. He's been using cups to pull it off. And my range of motion is getting better, but there's a cording from the surgery as well. So Dr. Newman said, there's only so much progress we're going to be able to make with physical therapy. And he immediately wanted to do what's called a fat transfer surgery. So he's going to take fat from somewhere either, you know, if we can find some belly fat or like I have some under the bottom of the butt, like, I don't know. He's going to take it from wherever he can find it. And then he's going to inject it in here and then continue physical therapy. And now <laughs> Dr. Bowie, who is my hip surgeon, right here. He found out through my MRI, the best news ever, there is no cancer. No cancer. However, I do have what's called an iliofemoral ligament tear. So I need to continue doing physical therapy for that. They think that the adhesions in my arm coupled with me being bedridden for almost two years, going back to work, maybe pushing my body a bit too far, too fast. Interestingly enough, the sitting position was really um, unhealthy for me at the time. But as I said, it's all happening for me. Like even the fall, we would have focused singularly on my hip and I wouldn't have gotten to Dr. Newman and had the breast assessed um, and maybe come, you know, not discovered the root cause of the problem, which is, you know, our whole body's connected. A lot of times, let me try and show you. You guys love the starfish shirt? Woohoo! I 
got it with my friend Kendra when she came to visit me about a week ago. It was so nice to have company. I've been alone, as you guys know a lot. Um, anywho, my left hip, the tear is in the iliofemoral ligament which is connected to the psoas muscle that goes in and it connects into your back. So Dr. Billy has done a few injections on the side of my hip. And now last week he did some in my back. You can probably see. Can you see that? Oh, it's just like black and blue there. A couple of spots. So <clears throat> what Dr. Billy did was it's called trigger point injections. And what he's doing right now is he's trying to have me do physical therapy, trigger point injections, and then worst case scenario, if getting this surgery done, physical therapy doesn't work, Dr. Billy may have to do a surgery on my psoas muscle. So I'm praying to God that doesn't happen. But that being said, um, even this, it's happening for me, not to me. I'm not a victim. I'm so blessed to be out on short-term disability and have the insurance covering everything that's happening right now. Um, my heart goes out to people who don't have insurance or coverage because it's so much to go through as is, let alone having to cover all of these bills. I mean, honestly, I'm trying to meet my $2,000 deductible and that is a lot for me out of pocket, um, especially being on disability. And But thank God, I'm cancer free. I'm just having a few issues that are like post-cancer related, which, you know, what I've really realized through this is that in my mind, I expect myself to be further than I am. And I need to really apply patience with how far I've come in such a short time. Look at how long my hair is, guys. Woo! And it's curly. Curly hair don't care. So stoked. Um, thank you so much for following me on my journey. I did change the name of my channel to She's Breast Cancer Journey simply with the intention that women or men who are going through breast cancer or whose family member are going through breast cancer will be able to find my channel easier. And I did want to begin to offer to extend my services. If anyone needs a counselor or even care coordinator through their cancer journey, feel free to email me at nycshee -E at gmail.com and I can do a one-on-one -on -one session with you and help you um, navigate your care. I want to send you my love and light and I want to say happy, happy, happy birthday to my mom. Cheryl, I love you, Mom. I am so blessed to be your daughter. I cannot overstate how much you mean to me and also my gratitude for all you've done for me throughout my battle with cancer, staying here at my house, taking care of me, I'm just so grateful. You've always helped to instill good values in me so I can really see healthy relationships versus unhealthy things. 
I'm so blessed. You and Dad. Dad's going to be taking me to my surgery on Wednesday. And I'm just so grateful for both of you. But I want to say happy birthday, Mom. I love you so, so much. And with that, God bless you all. And I look forward to seeing you soon. That's what she said. Mwah, mwah, mwah.